Hello YouTube, it's Sunday. The blizzard was like Thursday, Friday, so yesterday, Saturday, we did all the snow pushing. So we're done with that. We're going to walk over and show you these great big two foot diameter boulder so you don't fall on the ice. Look at this stuff. This is wet snow. They tried to kick it here. Wet, sticky snow. That was big, some big stuff. Okay, let's go in the shop. Okay, before we get to what we're going to do today, I'll show you my cheap Amazon Basics tripod about a year ago. I couldn't find it. It was in a small box. Believe me, it closes up. It's pretty lightweight. We got zip ties on there because there's no way to stop how far the legs go in and out. That I know of, I'm overlooking something, but that keeps it down where it's narrow, but it can tip over easy. But it's not as top heavy, because I like having it in front of me. And I'll show you just how I film a lot of my small up close stuff. I like having it like this, in case my camera's going to be on or I'm going to be up like this, I may jack it up. So I work around the camera a lot, so you can see what I'm doing. But we're going to work at the old desk. Nothing fancy, and we'll be right back to show you what our project's going to be one of them. Okay, here's one of my projects. How far are we? Let's show you how far the camera's up in the air. This is a goof off day. The camera's about that far off the desktop to the lens. Eh, we're lying. It's about like that far. And I'm about that far away from it right now. I like the big screen on this camera. I never really did a review on it, but I know I showed it when I got it a few years back. I quit doing Sunday in the shop. I never really got a lot of comments, a lot of views. So I thought once in a while I'd just do what am I doing out here. But um, I don't know what I'll title this one. This one might be uh, working out in the shop after the blizzard or something. Because you put the same thing in there, you can't give it the same name. Okay, you see my idea already? Drill in there and make this so you can pound on it. Now this is fractured. If you look, see that? These are 3 8 And I think I said in a video today these were my hammer. 13 16 not quite 3 quarters. Pox that in there. That way it hits down there when you're pounding on it. That way it can make a multi-tool out of it. What do you think I should do? Think about sanding this down. I have some cheap sandpaper. Believe me, it's cheap. I don't know how a couple bucks a pack. But it worked. I'll think about leaving it but really sanding aggressively on this. And then use what I used on the one where it had the, the red, clear, well, yellow, and blue. I redid that uh, Western Force. Use this. This is just clear. I like it better than shellac. It comes out real shiny. Crystal clear. I mean, it's three dollars or something can, but it's miracle paint made in the USA. It's not a I don't say it's a real cheap company. So what do you think? That's all I do. Well let's sit here today and sand all this off. Leave the orange and just sand this down. Get it to look a little better. Get the hole drill, get the bolt fit in there epoxy and just uh, maybe finish painting this. Some other ones painted blue all the way around. I can't reach it. It's up on the shelf. Finish painting this. Blue all the way around. Or just sand it. I'll probably just sand it. We don't feel like painting anything like that. Let's do that. Let's sand this thing down a little bit smoother. And when we're done, we'll clear coat it. There we go. We'll bring you back when we're done. We might stop in between and show you the bolt and stuff. This video might end up being 20 minutes long, but uh, I plan on posting it uh, this evening. So I'm doing it today on a Sunday, and it'll be posted on a Sunday night. So let's talk. More work. What else can I show you? Remember that rusted new Britain socket I had the other day doing all these tools? Remember when the video I did these wrenches? This took a lot of work. This took a lot of sanding and grinding. It's right there. And I took all the chrome off 
And this is tapered. I had to use my drum sanding rolls and my Dremel to eat that out there. But I noticed I might have tapered this once. This is tapered. I mean, they had to make it that way. I, I know I'm wrong. Because it's not chrome with stuff. So this this was made tapered. Or I made it worse by sitting there going around and around with a sanding drum. I probably did. But did that turn out pretty good? That's all bare steel. A little bit of plating left up on the top. See, that's the factory plating. And this is factory plating just polished. I stopped at the line. So I'd show you that it was worth fixing half inch socket. I mean, you never can have too many sockets. So there you go. You got to see that one done. That was pretty nasty if you looked at the picture. If I could find the picture, I'll put it in with this video. But you all watched the video. I'm sure you did. Anyway, let's do something. Okay, real clip. Short clip. We can do this. That's 150 and 200 because I know the clear is going to make it look shiny. Uh, we have a gap in here, so this carried bolt when you hit it can never hit this plastic because it's fractured. So, it's in there hitting the metal with a little bit of a gap. We may paint this blue to match this, or we may paint it black. We haven't decided. We're getting rid of some of that nastiness. See where I was in a hurry before when I redid this? They put shellac. So, we're taking it down where it looks just a little bit better. I think you know what I mean. We'll just leave the orange alone. It was kind of sloppy, but oh well. It's just a working tool. And I'm sure this is 3 8 square shank too. If I never showed you the tip, this is my homemade tire iron for small tires. Well, I used on car tires too. So, back to work. Uh, this is taking a while. We're going to take a little break. I'm using 150, 200 grit. We have like some 80 grit sanding disc to get out real nasty gouges and nasty spots here we go break time and we'll be back okay we're all sanding we painted that blue that is a half inch drill bit part way in there to clear that square part and how we polish this we'll take a file we'll file off the letters we'll chuck it in our cordless drill and take various grits of sandpaper and polish it. That's all you gotta do. You don't need a lathe. Just file by hand to get the, just enough to get the numbers off. Then polish it with whatever sandpaper you desire. This might be clear in what we think, because that shellac is kind of a yellow shellac, but it is yellow. And yes, this one stinks, but not as bad as the other screwdriver. That's freehand and no masking tape. Now bragging. But it's just a tool. We got to practice. We were, we were a kid. We was pretty good with model car stuff. We're just going to leave that clear. We sand it. We're going to slack it again. We'll have masking tape on here, of course. Uh, this sets just right where that don't touch, if you're careful. There, that will be about 15 minutes for that blue paint to dry. So it's break time and off and doing our bolt and getting epoxied in there. And here comes the train. Okay, we are done. We did take our quarter sheet sander and sand some more off so you can look in there and see the square part. So we made sure this will never hit that plastic because I showed you it does have a fracture. It's not real clear. The bolt's not centered that perfect in there. It's kind of hard to drill those holes free-handed. But it's touching in there. We kind of ground, uh, not a pencil tip, we kind of ground a bevel on that bolt so it context more in the very center of it because you look down in there and there's kind of plastic and stuff so i wanted to hit the best part of the metal i could down in there because i had the drill bit chewing against it to get the plastic off the metal shaft not bad i did use my abrasive wheels to polish that but you can use sandpaper just chuck it in your drill uh there's some, still some rough scratches but it's good enough. It's just a tire tool. This is a lot more orange than it shows on the camera. Uh, that's about it. Uh, if you're interested, after the pictures of this, I'll show you my new quarter sheet sander. Which I'm confused because, you know, and you, I'll explain it if you want to watch about that. How I, the sandpaper, it's bigger than a regular quarter sheet one. I know it is. 
Anyway, if you want to see that, that'll be after the pictures here. So thanks for watching. Okay, if you're still with me, here's my new sander. Okay, they had the really cheapy tool shop one, and I went through them things. They're like $15. Then they had the Performax one, which I'm happy with my drill, but it was like $30, and it was really cheapy. Uh, this has a micro filter that goes to it. I'm sorry, I just can't find it right now. If I can, I'll take a picture of it. Uh... We won't even look for the box. This supposedly has a thing on here to where the light lights up. Okay. Well, it's weird because it looks like something's on. That's just the color. But okay, plug your ears. It might be noisy. And I can't tell. These lights are supposed to change if you're pressing too hard. Okay, here's the only drawback on this. Uh, most quarter sheet sanders, your sandpaper is... Let me guess. 9 by 11, right? Something like that. Anyway, instruction says oh, you can make your own sandpaper from 9 by 11 and a half whatever sheet. Well, I've never seen a sheet that's 11 and a half long. Uh... Let me grab a package so we're not confused on the measurements. Okay, sandpaper comes 9 by 11. You put it in force, you're going to have 4.5 by 5.5. Well, it's not long enough. So I only get two pieces out of a big sheet because I have to cut them longer to go... This way. If you have it five and a half, which is cutting eleven and a half, you know, half the length, it doesn't want to fit. This is bigger than my older quarter sheet sander. In the quarter sheets I bought in a small pack, they don't fit. So I'm just gonna have to put up with whenever I cut two sheets out of here to fit the sander, I'm gonna have two short ones that I'm not gonna be able to use. Well, sandpaper's cheap and I don't use it that often, but it runs really smooth. Uh my other, I had an orbit sander, the paper kept flying up the hook and loop, I got tired of that. And I said I had one of the cheapy tool shop ones. Uh, years ago, the screw fell, I took it back. And the next time it started, I took it apart, and there was no Loctite on the screw. So the mechanism, the little weight on the motor was falling off. Just more or less what it was. Kind of an odd with the spring. Uh, the other one has like a big metal bracket you push down, and then the, like a piece of channel iron grabs it this you got to tuck underneath the wire can you see it right there if I can put up with it but I can't see these lights when I'm using it these lights are supposed to let you know if you're pressing too hard but this was $39 well they had a 15% sale so I got like $35 well plus I got 15% off everything that went in the brown paper bag that day of sandpaper and everything so I came out with a pretty good discount on what I bought for sandpaper and stuff. So, I wasn't complaining. And they only had three of these in the store. Uh, the other one, like the Tool Shop TP one, they had one in stock on display. And they had the yeah, Formax, there was one in stock. That was the one on display. So, they only had three of these. When I got there, there was only two. And that's from that morning, like a couple hours before. And usually at Menards, when you go to the register and it rings up, the time you get home and get online, they're pretty accurate about what's in stock. But I'll see if I can find that filter real quick. I'll never use it because you got to punch holes in the sandpaper, and I don't like doing that. Okay, for the fun of it, I was sanding my desktop over to that pegboard, mace night, whatever they call it. It filters this way, so dust goes in here. And you can tap it out. I wouldn't recommend trying to air it out, but 
No, I'll never use it. Because they give you that plastic thing, if you've ever had a sander, where you punch the hole, and it just rips the paper all up. I'm just... Use it outside or use it with a fan blowing the dust away from you. That's all I can tell you. Uh, you're still going to have half of your dust that's going to come off here, whether it's holes or not, from my experience. I bought it more for metal and wood. So, this will be chucked off in a drawer. I'll never use it. At least it's not that silly little cloth bag they give you. So, there, it's back underneath my bench over there. Uh, if you stayed here this long, thanks for watching. We're going to go in the house take a break. We're getting hungry. We want some lunch or something.